And, and this is plant based. Yeah, that, so that's 100% plants. And you know, there's cork and rubber and biochar and cotton, citric acid. What if you could take plants and materials from nature like these and make it into this wallet? In this video, I spoke with a chemistry professor and the founder of NFW who is doing exactly that. They're making clothes, shoes and car interiors from just plants. But there's more. So we live in a world where there's trillions of dollars per year worth of plastics and yeah. it turns out they're not just all fossil fuel and therefore high in carbon, yeah. and but they're toxic. So it's fundamentally toxic. So heart attacks, strokes, cancer, infertility, plastics fundamentally are this complex mixture of, of chemistries that weren't intended to be safe. If you can make materials that are all safe, that at the end of the life, they can just be ground up and go back to nature. Think about shoes that are non-toxic, that then can grind up and go back to the soil. That is completely waste-free, decarbonized, and safe. I'm Dr. Luke Haverhals. I am the founder and the CEO of NFW. NFW makes plastic-free materials, so we're working on materials for clothes, shoes, car interiors that are completely oil-free, plastic-free to solve the toxicity issue with uh, many of the materials that are around us in our modern lives. Every year, five people get one million pounds each for ideas that contribute towards a better environment and world with the Earthshot Prize. It was launched in 2020 by Prince William with the annual summit hosted by Bloomberg Philanthropies. I spoke to three out of the 15 finalists this year and Luke from NFW is one of them. Without further ado, let's get to the video. We're how's good. it going? It's going great, Fasayo. Um, how's your day been? How's... <laughs> uh, it's been a busy day, but it's been a great day. Yeah. yeah. So what you've created is used in clothing, um, footwear, watches, car, it, just like you mentioned, I saw like BMW, H&M, yeah, right. some big brands. Yeah. Um, what has that process been like for you? Uh, it's been a long journey. So yeah. the company started nine years ago, and even before that, I was a chemistry professor. Okay. So a long time ago, I was working in the lab and figured out how to get natural fibers to fuse. And the big idea about that is, you know, plastics, you mold them and shape them into anything. But if you can fuse natural fiber, then you, you can do what plastics do with natural yeah. materials. So we figured out how to fuse that. Fast forward a little bit. I started a company because I thought this idea should be um, commercialized and scaled up. I hired some other amazing people into the company and people like Steve Zika and Aaron Amstutz are early um, employees at NFW that helped us push this idea so that we could sort of like make anything. So we figured out how to put in the same mixers that normally mix up plastics, okay. put in recipes, all natural recipes, that once you mix them all up, then you can mold them and shape them into the kinds of materials that people use today. So it's a really um, interesting, highly scalable way to solve the, the plastic toxicity crisis in the world. Yeah. And what was the inspiration behind that? Like, what would you say is the thing it's solving for the world, essentially? Yeah. So we live in a world where there's trillions of dollars per year worth of plastics, and it yeah. turns out they're not just all fossil fuel and therefore high in carbon, yeah. and but they're toxic. So yeah. if you think about when we have to landfill things, and, and we have so much waste in this world, the waste is it has to go to landfills because it's, it's fundamentally toxic. So mm -hmm. heart attacks, strokes, cancer, infertility, plastics in the brain with, with links to Alzheimer's and all sorts of things now. Um, that, that problem is because plastics fundamentally are this complex mixture of, of chemistries that weren't intended to be safe. Mm. And so we solve that by using nature's natural ingredients, which we eat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're not competing with food, to be really clear. Um, we're using the byproducts okay. and, and co-products, but, but the point is, if you can make materials that are all safe, yeah. then your shoe, like I'm wearing these shoes right now, that at the end of the life, they can just be ground up and go back to nature, just like a tree. You know, a tree falls down, a tree limb falls off, you can grind that up and give it right back to nature. You know a tree limb's really durable, yeah. it'll last hundreds of years, but think about shoes that are non-toxic, that then can grind up and go back to the soil. That's the circular economy that is completely waste-free, decarbonized, and safe. And you mentioned the shoes. I believe this. this yeah, this is, is our product too, Claris. Yeah. Uh, that we. And yep. this is made of what exactly? So this is cotton, and and very importantly, it's recycled cotton. Okay. So when you look into the world of textiles, people use lots of different ingredients: polyester, 
cotton, nylon, rayon. NFW is solved for uh, a technological solution that it can allow people to use short fiber mm -hmm. and the fiber sort of acts like it's long because of the, the molding and the shaping process we can do on the yarn. And then once you have yarn that's like super yarn, super recycled cotton yarn, okay. then you can knit it, you can weave it, you can turn it into you know, polo shirts, but you can also turn it into the uppers of shoes, you can turn it into headliners for automobiles. So think, think about NFW as this really general purpose way to, oak, to replace plastics in the materials that then end up around you, yeah. in your home, in your vehicle, on your person. Yeah. So there, there's some things I noticed on the site. There's Miriam, uh, Miriam. Mi Miriam, yeah. Miriam is the plant-based leather. That's correct. Uh, Claris is the textile. Yep. Client is the no plastic footwear yep. and Tunera, I believe. Tuneras, yeah. So think about the outsole of a shoe has yeah. to be really durable. That's yeah. pliant. And then there's a bunch of technical rubber recipes that can do many other things as yeah. well. And then Tunera is on the inside of your shoe, you have this foam that gives you a nice yeah. comfy strike. So think of Tunera as the replacement to like ethyl vinyl acetate and these other uh, synthetics that are in the world today. I do not know what that is. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, fine. <laughs> sorry, sorry, pull chemistry. How, what is the percentage like of all of these materials? How, how much of it is all natural and um, yeah. you know, from existing materials? What's really unique about NFW is we focused on 100%. Uh, so what, what that is to say is all the molecules that are in these products are you could say bio neutral to nutrients. Mm. So for example, silica is in the soil. Okay. It's neutral, it's just in the soil. And silica, people use it already to, to mix into tires and things like that. And if you can mix in that into tires and make tires really tough, then you can imagine a little silica in, here's some murum, for example. Yeah. So and this a, is plant based. Yeah, that, so that's 100% plants. So, and you know, there's cork and rubber and biochar and cotton, citric acid. So th these are all the, the kinds of chemistries that are already built all around us in the natural system. And the idea was if you could make this recipe with those inputs, then because nature sort of vets things for toxins, it means you end up with a recipe that isn't gonna be toxic. And that, that same kind of vetting process people didn't do when they started making plastics. That is cool. <laughs> Can you explain these three ground rules? We're just reading up on the, three oh, yeah, ground, the ground rules, rules that, that NFW um, focuses on. So there's start well, stay clean, end well. How do they guide your process? That was the vision from the start of the company. I, uh, you know, I had to have an awesome team to get to the point where yeah. we kind of like simplified it. But it, what, what was in me and Aaron Amstutz's mind as we were doing the early tech development together was this idea that plastics don't end well. Why not? Well, it's because where they come from, it's how they're made. So, you know, there's toxic things that go on where fossil fuels are then, to you know, brought out of the ground in toxic ways. They go to refineries, lots of emissions. They're turned into toxic things and they're mixed together in these mixers. So the reasons why plastics don't end well is because they don't start well and they don't stay clean. Mm. So if you want to have a product in your life that can end well, and someone has to think about how it starts well, how it stays clean, so oh, it can end well. Oh, I see, I see. What, what do you think of this industry and the role of natural fiber materials in like the future moving forward? Like, How do you see us um, evolving in this global market? And uh, how do you see this you know, space going over the next decade, basically? Yeah, that's a great question. So one of the things that you want to think about anytime you're, you're, you, have a, you believe you might have a change the world idea, at least what I did felt really compelled to do was think about if this is as successful as I think it's going to be, then what is it going to look like when it's at scale? Yeah. Because what we want to have is a positive impact, right? There's a lot of things when they grow really big, you find out, oh no, some terrible impact and now it's really big. Mm. So what we did was we said, okay, what ingredients will we use? Well, we're, we're only going to use natural ingredients. We can go further though. We can say, we want to source those natural ingredients regeneratively. Okay. We only want to source abundant ingredients. We don't want to source things like some, we don't want to find that, that we- scarce, probably. That, yeah, we or don't- Or not enough, essentially, that would deplete the earth maybe? Correct, that's okay. right. We, we don't want to end up 
finding that we need the extract from some rare Himalayan yeah. flower and then run overrun the Himalayas because we need this, this rare thing. Um, we constrained our recipes and how we built the technology to those things that are waste and otherwise just grown in massive scale. And that's so that if we were successful, and I don't know, like, thank you, Earthshot. <laughs> um, but if we're successful, then, then it means that this will have a positive impact when you scale it up to billions of people. You know, there's 8 billion people on planet yeah. Earth. And right now, there's a lot of people who don't get access to the same, to the same life. Yeah. And that's a, that's a resource constraint. But the good news here is the materials we're using more of them grow on a day, in a day on Earth, your average day, than the output of the plastics industry in a year. Because cellulose is so abundant, so that cellulose is like, anytime you look at a plant, or you're looking at cotton, uh, you're looking at a tree, yeah. you're seeing cellulose, lignocellulose, hemicellulose, you're seeing uh, oil, there's oils in there, there's, there's these different ingredients. And nature just produces these at massive scale because photosynthesis yeah. is the biggest yeah. technology humans kind of can watch happening all around us. So we're tapped into that, that's our source. If you're tapped into that for a source, then when you get to the big scale, then you're tapped into something that can supply and supply in a way without negative externalities. Yeah. I think I'll just round off with what the ultimate vision for NFW is and um, basically looking at the broader impact of what you hope to achieve in reducing carbon emissions and also, I think, the, is the word regenerative farming yes. or regenerative agriculture? Is yeah, it? yeah it, both, are, both are good terms, okay. yeah. So, so the, the future of that, the ultimate yep. vision for NFW. So think about photosynthesis as being so abundant. It, yeah. that was a, the way you said it was perfect because when, when humans look at the amount of carbon that needs to be sequestered by 2030, 2040, 2050, and you look at the available technology and the amount of money it would take to scale sort of human technologies, what you, what you find is you come up sh short, like yeah. way, way short. Yeah. In the meantime, plants do everything they do with sunlight and sequester carbon. Yeah. So, there's this key insight that people have made, which is that if you let plants um, grow in soil and you don't disturb the soil, then the biome of the soil and the way the plants work is the carbon can get sunk in soil. So you, where I'm from in the United States, there was a prairie that was built up over years and years and years um, where every, you know, the, the grasses grew and the carbon got sunk in and it built up all this topsoil. Um, that's sunk carbon. Yeah. So that is the technology, it turns out, that's already globally deployed or deployable um, in, in ways. And what we want to do at NFW is not just source natural materials. We want to source regenerative materials. So we're working right now in Thailand with some people that are doing what's called wanakasate rubber. And what they're doing is they're taking what were plantations and reforesting it. So they're encouraging biodiversity. They're growing their food in and around the trees. The trees actually produce more rubber and the farmers get more money, and that product, the sap of the tree, now can be used to make a Stella McCartney bag or a BMW car seat someday. Yeah. So we're, we're, um, we're really connecting. You know, when, when you buy a shoe today, that shoe, if it's not one of these NFW-linked uh, brands, the shoe is, is linked back to an oil rig. It's, it's linked back to something that fundamentally is extractive and toxic. What we're trying to do is we want to make the world a better place. We want to tie, not only have the, you know, everything start well, stay clean, end well. We want to do the best that we can do on starting well. We want to encourage farmers to do the right thing that sinks carbon, that brings back biodiversity, that gets them paid, and so that this positive set of business can generate. We, we, we see ourselves as like a, a really important piece, but a piece in a greater ecosystem of doing good. Yeah, people have ideas, people always come up with ideas, but you need funding to get the idea yeah. started, and you need to talk about these ideas as well. That's right. So how did you approach that? Maybe in like the beginning and the, the midterm. Yeah, so, Depending on how you want to define beginning, uh, you know, I was a chemistry professor before. Yeah. So a lot of the science behind the company was developed in eight years prior to the 
company even starting. So uh, you could say like the, the US government paid for a lot of the fundamental technical science. And at that point I wasn't really thinking about starting a company. I started a company when I realized it was gonna need resources well beyond what grant funding could do. And that uh, what the company was gonna need to do is be a positive business for change. Mm. You know, there, it's really important, right, that people can spend their money on things that do positive business. If they're spending their money on things that do negative business, then you're winding yeah. things down as yeah. opposed to building things up. So um, when I started the company, then I, I met uh, a mission aligned um, family, uh, the Zika family, so Steve Zika, Ken Zika, their, their whole family um, was doing what, what you call impact investing in Peoria, Illinois. Okay. And they were willing to take this unbelievably huge risk on an idea that, that none of us knew exactly where it was going to go. But they, we knew enough about the scalability that we, we had to give it a try. Um, from there, Steve and I got busy working together and building NFW. And we've continued to really search the world really over for investors that are mission minded who, when they think about the kind of businesses that they want to fund, that they can see positive, not just positive gross margin yeah. um, and, and great cogs, positive um, change but positive change that goes with that. Because you know, in the end, business is the driver of of a certain kind of change at, at just a different scale. Like there's some wonderful things, of course, you can do with philanthropy and changing the hearts of people. Um, we all vote with dollars. Yeah. So we have the system that we've built up in this world where you can vote with your dollars by everything you're buying. And we need to be able to make things, physical things, that are just wholesome and good so that people can vote with their dollars for wholesome and good. So we're trying to find investors who, who are mission aligned around that kind of story. Yeah. Is there anything you want to add to this? I just want to say thank you. <laughs> thank um, you. It's an honor to be on your, on oh. your uh, channel and um, thank you it so was much. really great talking out a little bit yeah. ago and learning some of your story. <laughs> I mean, you've got uh, an amazing story of, of uh, where you've taken an idea and, and here we so are. Much. So thank, you, thank so you. And thank you for sharing yours as well. Yeah. Thank you. This was really awesome.